any equation of the form y equals mx plus b when graphed in the xy plane will give us some type of a line. So in example one, I want to go over the process for doing that, where here we have y equals 2x minus 4. That's definitely of this form. Then once we have our graph, we're going to talk about what the x-intercept is as well as the y-intercept. So first, I'm going to label um, the x and the y-axis. And to graph y equals 2x minus 4, I'm going to create a table of values. x in one column and y in the other. So to graph this line, you just need two points. But what I'm going to do is choose several values for x and solve for their corresponding y values and then plot those points in this plane. So you can choose any x values that you'd like. I think I'll just pick, I don't know, maybe three or four. Maybe um, we'll do negative two, negative one, zero. Why not one and two? Okay, these five. The idea is you take these x's, you put them here, and then you figure out what the corresponding y value is. I'll do that off to the side. So for this first one, y is going to be equal to 2 times negative 2 minus 4. And when you simplify this, we get negative 8. Continuing in this fashion for negative 1, again, you take your equation, you put negative 1 in place of x, and then solve for y, and this simplifies to negative 6. Same thing for 0. You take 0, put it in place of x, and solve for y, Okay, that's 0 minus 4, which simplifies to negative 4. And then the last two, if we put 1 in place of x, we get 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. And then lastly, if we put 2 in place of x, we get 4 minus 4, which is 0. So to plot these points, if x is negative 2, y equals negative 8, we start at 0, 0, we go two places to the left on the x-axis, and then down eight places on the y-axis, and we have this point right here. This is negative 2, negative 8. Likewise, for this next point, x is negative 1, y is negative 6, so we go left 1 and down 6 to give us this spot here. 0, negative 4. Okay, 0 for x means we're right here, but then we go down four places to get this spot. And already I see a pattern is emerging, which is why I said really you just need two points, but again, just to complete our picture, um, here we have 1, negative 2. So that's 1 to negative 2. And the last one is, okay, here this is 2 to the right for x, and we don't go up or down because y is 0, and we end up with this spot here. The trend appears to be the equation that goes through these spots, so I'm going to go ahead and sketch that in. So this is not a perfect sketch by any means, but it definitely illustrates the point of if you're given an equation of this form and you create a table of values and plot those points, the graph that goes between those is a line. So now let's talk about this other definition, the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So let's start with the y-intercept. That refers to the place where your graph crosses the y-axis, which is located right here. So I'm going to label that, just in a different color, this spot. That is 0, negative 4. I'm going to place that below the y-intercept. The thing to point out about the y-intercept is you get a y-value, but the corresponding x-value has it always has to be 0 because it lies on the y-axis. Now the x-intercept is where the graph crosses over the x-axis, and I can see that's right here, so I'll just label that a different color. And this is the point 2 comma 0. And the thing to point about the x-intercept is, okay, so you get an x value, which is 2, but the y value always must be 0. So here's a couple of facts about your x-intercept and your y-intercept. For the x-intercept, you get some number for x, 
but it must be that this number y is always zero. That's what it means to be on the x-axis. And so similarly, if you look at this value, the y-intercept has negative four for y, but it must be that x is always zero, which gave us this spot down here. So this is how you would graph any equation by creating a table of values. And here we just defined a couple of terms off of this graph. In example two, I still want to graph this equation, which will be a line, but I notice that this is not in the form y equals mx plus b, because y is not by itself. And since this is a line, you only need two points to graph it. So instead of creating a table of values, which won't be very easy to do the way this equation is written, what we're going to do is find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, we're going to plot wherever those points are, and then connect them with a line, whatever it happens to look like. So again, this is just a different strategy for graphing a line, but it's using these two specific points. So what we're going to do is first find the x-intercept. If you want to find the x-intercept, it has some x value, but I know the y value is always zero. So what I'm going to do is take my equation. I'm not going to do anything to x, but wherever I see a y, I'm going to put zero in place of y. It will allow me to solve for x, thus finding the x-intercept. Let's check that out. Okay, so I take my equation. I write 2x. But then the second I get to y, I put a 0 in place of y. This equation is very easy to solve because you get 2x, 3 times 0 is just 0, and on the other side you get 6. We know how to solve an equation like this pretty easily. You can just divide both sides by 2. And here you have x is equal to 3. What all this work tells me is that the x-intercept has an x value of 3 and the y value is 0. And this is a very easy point that you can plot. I go over three places on the x-axis. The y value is zero. I don't go up or down. And I have this spot right here. So if your equation is not solved for y, it might be very easy to find an x-intercept or a y-intercept. Okay, so to graph this line, we just need one other point. That other point I'm going to use is the y-intercept. So let's figure out how to find that. Whatever it is, it has 0 for x, but some y value that we need to solve for. I'm going to take the same approach where I go to my equation. Wherever I see an x, I'm going to put a 0, and I'm going to solve for y. Let's try that out. So let's see. We get 2 times 0, because x is equal to 0. Then I get plus 3 times y. I don't know what that is. And that's equal to 6. This equation also simplifies really nicely. The 2 times 0 goes away. You're left with 3y is equal to 6. And to solve this equation for y, we would just divide both sides by 3. And when we do this, we get y is equal to 2. What all this work tells me is that if x is 0, y must be 2. That's the y-intercept. If you start at 0, 0, since x is 0, you don't go left or right but you do go up two places. Whatever my line is, it goes between these two points. So I'm gonna sketch that in there. All right, so now I have my graph. So again, two different strategies. If your equation was just a y equals, I think example one goes over a good way to get that graph. But if your equation is not solved for y, what you could do is just find these two particular points, plot them, and then sketch the line going between them. And for example three, I want to graph the equation y is equal to five. And this really does not look like any of the previous equations, but I put this fact up here. If you have an equation that is x equals a number, that's going to be a vertical line, versus if you have an equation of the form y is equal to a number, it's going to be a horizontal line. So for this one, I'm choosing a y equals a number. We're going to graph it and then see why it is, in fact, in this case, a horizontal line. So to do this, you could use a table of values if you'd like. And I think in the first example, what we did, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, I just picked those, whatever, you could use any numbers you'd like. But the idea is, for these particular x values, 
you want to somehow use this equation to find the corresponding y values. But it's strange. There's no x that appears anywhere in here. But it is true that y is always equal to 5. So what this means is, at x equals negative 2, you can't put that negative 2 anywhere, but y definitely is 5. So what I'm going to do is just put 5 right over here. So there's no actual math to work out. It's like, oh, I picked negative 2 for x. I looked to my equation. I can't do anything with this negative 2, but it's true that y is 5, so I just put a y, uh, 5 here. This would be true for every single point. So like at negative 1, you get 5. At 0, you get 5. Same thing for 1 and 2. If we plot these points, okay, negative 2, 5 is this point right there. Plot that one. Negative 1, 5 is this point here. 0, 5 is right here. And then the same thing is going to be true for 1, 5, and 2, 5. You always get that the y value is 5. I mean, that's exactly what this equation is saying. I think I have enough points up here to illustrate that. Okay, my equation, it's the horizontal line that's going between these points because this is exactly where the y value is always 5. So there is my graph. But this was a simple explanation as to why if you have y is equal to a number, it's got to be a horizontal line where the y value is 5. So like if this was y was equal to 10, it, same idea, you'd have this horizontal line at 10. Or if y was equal to negative 6, you'd have a horizontal line down here. And what you could try is, well, you know, what if the example was x is equal to 5? You know, what is this going to look like in this case? Well, if the x value is always 5, here's x is equal to 5, now the y value can be anything. So you get a graph that goes up and down at this location here. So I encourage you to graph that yourself, but I want to just check out one of these. So y equals a number is a horizontal line.